Hello and welcome back. On today's episode, we have a guest, Dana Clemenson from the Can Learn English podcast. Together, we'll read through 25 interesting facts about Canada and hear Dana's personal, very Canadian opinion about them. So let's get to it. Hi, Dana. Hello, Shauna. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. I am back from my holidays in Canada now, back in Switzerland. So it was a little bit tough with the with the uh, jet lag, but okay. Where have... are you from in Canada? I am from a place called London, Ontario, which is in southwestern Ontario. It's between Lake Erie and Lake Huron. Okay, very cool. So actually, um, just to preface this, yes, I'm Shauna, as you all know. And then um, I'm here today with Dana, Dana Clemenson, or what is your yeah, real last name? That's it. Gotta- Clemenson, okay. that's it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Dana is the host of the Can Learn English podcast. What is the Can Learn English podcast? Yes, the Can Learn English podcast is a weekly podcast that I host that teaches English for Canada. So every week we do a expression and then we tie that expression in with a Canadian fact, maybe a bit about culture or history. Yeah, it's very cool. If you guys are interested in checking it out, I highly recommend going to her page. Uh, you can access it on iTunes, on Stitcher, and pretty much all podcast platforms, right? Yeah, that's it. And you can also go to canlearnenglishpodcast.com. Mm-hmm. Great. So we're actually going to be talking about Canada today. I was just telling Dana actually beforehand that uh, my aunt Karen is from Canada. And when she used to come to the United States, she said, hey, you guys don't know enough about us. You need to learn more about Canada and hear about and know about the provinces. And and so actually, I wanted to talk to Dana about her experience being a Canadian and, you know, different facts about Canada. And so actually, what I'd like to do is to go through a page that I found. It's from www.swedishnomad.com and read through all of the 25 facts that are there. And I don't want to focus on each individual one, but there are some within this list that are um, are, are fairly interesting, I think. Uh, we can kind of take turns reading them and I can stop <laughs> uh, every time I think there's one that's interesting just so that they can hear your Canadian voice versus my American voice, if that's that's cool with you. Yeah, I'm interested to hear or to get feedback if anyone can hear the differences in our accents. And although like I can't hear a difference now, maybe when I go back and listen to this recording, we'll hear it a little bit more. Yeah, I was going to mention the same thing just because I don't I don't hear a difference in our accent at all. So we'll just have to wait and see what it's like on the playback. <laughs> OK, great. All right. So um, number one, can you go ahead and read that one? We can start off and then we'll take turns. Yeah, this is the first one. It's Canada is the second largest country in the world. And it says only Russia has a larger area in the world. Canada's total area measures a total of 9.984 million square kilometers. Okay. All right. Cool fact. I don't really have much to say about that. (laughs) Do you? I think people generally think that Canada is smaller than the United States, based on how the map like on the globe will look, they think, oh, the U.S. is like almost the same size as Canada. Where does the U.S. rank? Oh, I actually don't know. (laughs) I'd have to look that up. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm going to have to look that up later as well, because now I'm curious. Yeah, because this actually surprised me. I didn't expect, you know, I was thinking China or, yeah, but I guess, yeah, maps kind of skew our vision of size. Yeah, I know Brazil. I always think Brazil, you know, is eh, reasonably sized. And then, you know, you look at their maps and it's like, wait, it's so much bigger. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Europe fits inside of it. Okay, number two, uh, Canadians drink more than 22,700,000 hectoliters. I'm not even sure what a hectoliter is (laughs) of beer per year. All right. That's a lot of beer. And about 80 percent of all alcohol consumed is beer. On average, this means that one Canadian drinks about 79 liters per year. The place where they drink the most in the country is in the territory of Yukon, with an average of 128 liters per person annually. Um, and I noticed there's a picture down below Moosehead. Right, so is this is this a very popular beer? It is. I actually have some in my 
fridge. I can buy it here in Switzerland and yeah, I have it in my fridge. So evidently okay, it is it's- a popular beer <laughs> and yeah. I do like beer. I know like in Europe where I live, it's not really popular for women to drink beer, but women drink beer in Canada just as much as men drink beer, I think. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and does Moosehead taste like, I mean, for people that haven't been to Canada or haven't tasted this beer before, I mean, what would it be similar to? Can you think of a beer that's maybe more international? Could be. A yeah, different- it's kind of similar to maybe Budweiser or Coors Light, uh, just kind of a light tasting summer lager. It's really, it's got a really nice flavor. And the one thing that Canadians always tease about Americans is mm-hmm. that they're your beer is like water. Yes. It has like a lower alcohol percentage. So I think in the picture I can see here, it says 5%. Mm -hmm. And we always joke that American beer is just like drinking water. Yeah. I think some of the ones that are the most famous here definitely taste like water. (laughs) Yeah. There was a Budweiser factory in my, um, oh gosh, that's a funny story. I'll tell it real quick. Um, When I was growing up in Fairfield, California, there was a Budweiser factory and we used to go there on tours. And so if you're under the drinking age, they just give you pretzels and I think soda to drink. Um, but you could still go inside the factory on the tours. And I remember one time going and there was this group of foreigners taste testing the beer. And they said, um, one of the beers is fresh. It was uh, made today, brewed today. And one of them was in the garage for the past six months. Now you can tell the difference, which is which. And they said the wrong thing. <laughs> oh no. It, that the fresh one was the one that was in the garage for six months. And I remember it just got quiet. It was so awkward. And I was thinking like, why would you ask that question inside of a brewery that's trying to sell its really fresh beer? Fresh beer. Yeah. So awkward. Oh, yeah. Um, but anyway, not yeah. very good marketing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Budweiser, Budweiser is definitely one of those ones that kind of tastes like water. Not to say it's not good. No, I, I still like it. <laughs> So, okay. Um, let's go to the next one. An apology. Okay. The next one says an apology act. So Canadians are known for apologizing and saying sorry. So <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to read this here. So in 2009, an apology act was passed that made apologies inadmissible in court. And yeah, so I guess what happens is if you are in a car accident and you say, Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, then that could be like perceived as you're guilty. Whereas in Canada, we might like, we say sorry as excuse me. So mm-hmm. sorry, um, can I have a cup of coffee? Like, so it's oh, not always taken as like the literal word of as an apology. Okay. And that's definitely one of the words that stands out as being different from American English. Does everyone say sorry, sorry in Canada? Sorry. Pronunciation? Yeah. I think generally people say sorry. I mean, some people might say, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, that's American. Sorry. Sorry. (laughs) Sounded really American when I said that. All right. Number four, one of the friendliest countries in the world. Okay. I have to admit with, from the Canadians I've met, I have never met an an annoying, mean or rude Canadian. They kind of, everyone's been very, very nice. So I have to agree with him. (laughs) Yeah. We don't mind this reputation. We actually embrace it. So, um, I'm happy to just leave this one and not argue on it. (laughs) And <laughs> uh, the next one is Canada is the world's most educated country. So at least 56 of the total population have earned some sort of degree uh, for their education after high school. And that's 6% more than Japan, which is in second place, Yeah, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we have a really great education system. And we also have a government loan program that helps people. Did you feel like when you were in middle school, high school, that the, the school system was preparing you for college and that were, they were kind of pushing that? Absolutely. Even like the high school I went, it was pretty much seen as a mandatory next step to go to okay. some type of, we would call it post-secondary education. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't know many people that haven't completed some type of post-secondary education. Mm-hmm. I can't think of anybody. Okay. Did career counselors help you with applications and get started? Yeah, we call them guidance counselors and you have those in high school and they will help you choose a university or a college program. 
or something like that. And most people, yeah, most people just pick maybe their local college or their local university and take something that they're interested in. Cool. Very nice. Okay. Six, Canada has more lakes than the rest of the world combined. <laughs> this was a surprising one for me. I've, I knew they had some lakes, but more than the rest of the world combined, it's a lot. So there are three yeah. million lakes in Canada, if you include smaller lakes as well, right? And that they have 20% of the world's fresh water there was also a little bit surprising. Do you have anything to say about that? Have you been to any of the lakes in Canada? Yeah, well, I grew up near the Great Lake region. So Mm -hmm. spent a lot of time swimming in Lake Erie and in Lake Huron, which are the Mm -hmm. two most popular ones. Toronto would be on Lake Ontario. Mm -hmm. And then the other Great Lakes are Lake Michigan and Lake Superior. Mm -hmm. And Lake Superior is bigger than some countries in Europe. Like I know it's bigger than Ireland. So as a comparison, it's like a huge, huge, huge <laughs> lake. I've never been to Lake Superior. Okay. So superior in size, but not maybe not necessarily in the way it looks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well no, it's a beautiful lake, I'm sure. I just have never traveled up that way. And since we have two beautiful Great Lakes nearby, mm. I would just usually hang out there and go to the beach. Okay. So there are beaches that you can go to. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there are several beaches uh, and there's really cool sand dunes. So Mm -hmm. these are big hills of sand that you can, Mm. you know, it's gorgeous. Yeah, I've just been to, um, well, I was in Detroit and I guess, I mean, what lake would be next to Detroit? I mean, is that Lake Michigan right there or is it be Lake? Yeah, I was just in Detroit as well. Were we? I wonder if we were there at the same time. That would have been. Oh, no, they're back in the past. (laughs) Oh, okay, okay. 13 after they had the the whole issue with the burnings of the all of the houses I don't know yeah no that's Lake Huron that would be okay. Lake Huron I believe right well very beautiful there I've kind of it made me want to live next to more water I mean I wish I lived next to a beach or a river or you know the lake lake life is just nice too yeah have a boat all right at least 10 percent of the population are vegetarians or vegans hmm okay mm. have you met a lot of vegetarians or vegans there? yeah yeah yeah, I do have quite a few friends that are vegetarians or vegans. So, okay. sure, yeah. Cool. Okay, this one is my turn. Famous Canadians. Did you know that Justin Bieber is Canadian? And then we have other celebrities, Jim Carrey, Mike Myers, Celine Dion, Ryan Gosling, William Shatner, Pamela Anderson, Keanu Reeves, Drake, Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky, obviously. <laughs> Shania Twain. <laughs> uh, yeah, we do have a, actually a lot more famous Canadians and I think people realize. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's definitely something to note is that when Canadians are in the United States, I would never be able to say, okay, that's a Canadian, right? Cause you guys look, I mean, you could be American the way that you look, yeah. the way that you speak. I mean, nothing sticks out about someone being Canadian. I mean, not unless you have like the Canadian flag on your backpack, which I have. Yeah every now and then. (laughs) Um, And so it's it's actually kind of hard to form, you know, your own opinion about Canadians just by the Canadians you meet, because a lot of times they come across as American. Yeah. So yeah, I find the same. I like to usually play like, because I live in Europe. So there's lots of tourism from North America. And I often hear people speaking English. Mm -hmm. And I like to kind of guess, hmm, is that person speaking English? Are they an American? Are they Canadian? And how do you determine? (laughs) <laughs> I usually can like I can hear certain American accents quite okay. like you, you're from California. So you're going to have a similar accent, I think, to Canadians. That's what I've heard. Like Californians are a little bit harder to distinguish, but mm-hmm. certain states in America, you can definitely tell. And then I just look for any type of OU combination. So words like about, out, um, house, house. Yeah, these are going to usually give away a Canadian And then I'll just listen. But most of the time I can tell. Okay. But not by the way that they dress or the way that they look or any of that appearance. No. All right. Um, So actually this list is, we can go through a little bit quicker now. Um, Home to the biggest population of wild bears. Okay. 25,000 polar bears. About 15,000 live in the northern parts of Canada. Okay. It's also home to black bears, grizzly bears, and kermode bears. Hmm. The perfect habitat for these majestic animals. Uh, Have you ever come across a bear down there? I have seen a bear. I've seen uh, a cub, so a bear cub, a baby bear. 
on the highway when I was driving out with my family on vacation to Prince Edward Island. Mm -hmm. We saw one. And then there are sometimes bear reportings in the region that I'm from. But like that would be my biggest fear is to run into a bear. So touch wood. Right. Just the black bears. Just the black bears. But I think grizzly bears are more in the Yukon. Yeah. The north, maybe BC. I'm just speculating. No idea. Yeah, no, it's it's true. Actually, we have California. Um, we actually have a lot of black bears too. When you go camping here, you'll run into black bears. It's kind of kind of fun. They're they're friendly for the most part. <laughs> if you have food, maybe not so much. But yeah. Anyway, um, very cool though that there's so many polar bears there. Very nice. Okay, so the next one is diversity and acceptance. Another thing that Canadians can pride themselves on is their diversity and high acceptance for different lifestyles. So this is like religion, sex, ethnicity, ethnicity, and much more. So yeah, this is like very typically Canadian. I feel like we're a lot further ahead than the United States is in this area. And I always kind of, when I'm listening to news in the United States, it's kind of funny because you're like, really, how is this still a problem? Yeah. yeah. Can you give an example of that? Uh, yeah, a couple of years ago, there was a big debate in the United States about legalizing same-sex marriage. Mm-hmm. And this happened when I was in high school in Canada. And uh, I, we just, Parliament voted on it. They passed this as law. And, mm-hmm. right. You so know, that, yeah, 2015, that. the same-sex marriage in the U.S. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's way behind. You think in the 2000s, like this is, yeah, still a question. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I've, we kind of have that. Um, I wouldn't say stereotype of Canadians, but like that, the idea that Canadians are a little bit ahead <laughs> in these sorts of matters too. So that's a, definitely a good thing to pride yourself with for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 11, Canada's lowest recorded temperature was negative 63 degrees Celsius. That's negative 81.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Interesting. Yeah. But I think cold. Yeah. <laughs> near London, Ontario. Is it also this cold? Probably no, not. No, 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 no. Like minus minus 20 with like a wind chill. That's okay. what you Yeah. Okay. Okay. Around 90% of Canada's land area is uninhabited. So yeah, it's because like most Canadians live kind of in the southern area of Canada near the U.S. border because okay. like most of Canada has very harsh living conditions and it wouldn't be great to live there. Okay. So and Say, for example, um, I mean, you're from near the Great Lakes. Do you have a lot of friends in, you know, Vancouver and British Columbia and like on the other side or? No, no. not really. It's yeah. Other. Like, yeah. <laughs> all right. The longest coastline in the world. OK, I guess that's not so surprising. You know, second largest country in the world and yeah, surrounded by water. OK, so um, uh, you can go to the next one. Sorry. Montreal is the second largest French speaking city after Paris. Hmm. I didn't know that, but I know that. It's a decent sized city, so that is interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. And do you speak French? No, I spent a lot of time learning French, but I was never able to, you know, speak French. Like where I'm from, we have very limited access to French, and we don't hear French spoken or anything like that. What I have heard though is, like, based on having a Canadian French education. If I were to, say, live in a country where I was immersed in French, like fluency doesn't take as long as you would think. Like it's not like starting from scratch or starting from the very beginning. Right. So but Canada is considered, uh, I mean, they have two languages, right? Two national. Yeah, two official languages. Every, Every product that's bought in Canada has to have French and English on it. And you have the right to interact with anyone in a government position in either French or in English. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very cool. Number 15, Canadians love poutine and maple syrup. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. True, true. True, true. (laughs) What's poutine for people that are listening? French fries with gravy and cheese curds melted. It's delicious. And have you found that in Switzerland at all? (laughs) No, I haven't. I know that when I was living in Sao Paulo, there is a poutine restaurant in Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. So I never, we never went there. Um, But maybe like on a future visit, I'll go see and check it out. And do you just like it plain like that with just the cheese curds and the gravy or do you like? Yeah, I like the classic poutine. Like you can get it with like bacon and all this other Mm -hmm. 
stuff, but it's not really for me. Yeah. It really surprised me. Um, when I was living in um, New York, I was looking for cheap, I guess, cheap rides. I heard Amtrak had cheap rides every now and then um, up to Canada. And so I found one $90 round trip from New York City to Montreal. And uh, it was a 13 hour ride. I mean, I think it would have been so much faster by car or by any other form of transportation. Yeah. But we got up there and, uh, you know, got out, started walking around. We saw poutine everywhere. And I'm like, what in the world is poutine? I've never heard about this in my entire life. And then, um, I mean, later on, I started paying attention and realized, okay, when I was in Austin, there was a poutine place. I think in some of the big cities now, there's, I mean, Canadians obviously live in the United States too, and they started opening up these poutine restaurants. Yeah. But I really enjoyed it. I was, I, th- I found it very surprising, like a very interesting mixture of ingredients. It's delicious. All right. Um, and maple syrup, of course. Maple syrup comes from maple trees, right? Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And most of the world's maple syrup is made in Canada. Yeah. I think that's kind of an assumption that we make too. <laughs> like, oh, we see maple syrup. We have it every Saturday morning, you know, breakfast with, you know, pancakes and waffles. And then the if there's maple syrup on the table, if it's not the fake one with a lot of sugar inside of it, we go, hmm, must be from Canada. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But we do have some um, production of it in like Vermont and in Maine and some of those. Yeah. Yeah. Are close to Canada. Yeah. yeah. So the rest of the facts here, um, they're just kind of very short. Canadians consume more macaroni and cheese than any other nation in the world. You can stop me if there's anything that's like shocking or like. This one is actually really funny because I actually had macaroni and cheese for lunch today. So. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you write yeah. that we have it growing up? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. The world's first landing pad for UFOs was built in St. Paul, Ab- Alberta. I didn't okay. know that. Okay. All right. One of the happiest nations in the world, ranked number seven in 2018. Okay. Oh, very cool. Canadians are also sometimes referred to as Canucks. Canucks? Mm-hmm. Canucks? How do you Canucks? pronounce Canucks. 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 Okay. All right. The nas- nation's official phone number is 1 800 O Canada. I don't know mm-hmm. why this is. Okay. All right. Um, and then you want to read the last five? Yeah. These are five times Canada facts for kids. Mm-hmm. Hockey and lacrosse are Canada's national sports. Okay. Every Christmas, one million letters are addressed to Santa Claus. And like I actually got into a debate when I was living in Ireland because in Europe, Santa Claus lives in Lapland which is in yeah. Finland, I think. Mm-hmm. But in Canada, we think that he lives in Canada. And his postal code is H zero H zero H zero. So like ho oh, ho no. ho. Yeah. So <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. And you can yeah. So you wait. can write a letter to Santa, and he'll write you one back. So. But he there's someone that really writes you back. Yeah, somebody writes you back. Funny, I like that. Yeah. So you wrote them too. You wrote. Yeah, Santa I, did. I wrote. Yeah, my list of what I wanted. Okay, the next one is Canada's national parks have free admission for kids. Uh, This one I've never heard of before. Ogopogo is a mythical creature living in Okanagan Lake, British Columbia, and it's similar to the Loch Ness Monster. And the final one is the beaver is the national animal of Canada. Okay. Cool. Anything else you'd like to add to this or do you do you like this list? Do you think Yeah, that was a really fun list. Um I think it was very interesting. I learned a little bit as well. So that's awesome. Really cool. So um and this was written by Alex Waltner, the Swedish nomad. So if anyone wants to check that out, that's on Swedishnomad.com slash facts about Canada. So, um, yeah, thanks for giving your input on Canada. I'd really like to hear more about it. Um, you know, we can talk after this call and um, we can talk about different places to visit, things to see, and uh, so much yeah. more. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> no problem. Thanks again, Dana, for the wonderful interview. So, once again, Dana has an English learning podcast called the Can Learn English Podcast which is available on iTunes, Spotify, and all good podcast players. You can also visit her website at canlearnenglishpodcast.com. Until next time, bye.